Hey, hello there. My fine feathered friends. Assuming you have feathers, and if you don't have feathers, hello my fine furred friends. Hello my fine um haired friends. Um hello my um other friends. You know, all of the friends. This this year is my body in Sveteketu. Um and I'm gonna talk about Jesus today. The I got the name Sveteketu from uh, the Chandugya pod Chandugya. Chandogya Upanishad. And um, he's kind of a neat guy. Uh, he is basically, a, like in the story, he's like a really um, advanced student who knows all kinds of different stuff and is a little bit arrogant. But then his father, who is a Rishi, um, tells him, well, you know, my son, uh, did you know that you're Brahmin? And he's like, what? 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 My teachers didn't tell me that, so then he gets educated about the fact of being Brahmin. Also, look, I have a big spear. Wait, what? Oh. <laughs> I, I exited out of Firefox, and it decided it needed to tell me again that um, I had exited out of Firefox. Thank you, Firefox, for letting me know that. But today, I wanted to talk a little bit about... Jesus Christ! Um, because recently I've been doing a lot of reading of, of the New Testament and stuff like that. And, you know, I got to say, I rather like Jesus. And, um, I've been going through basically, it's just a, a big collection of Jesus quotes. It's just like everything, every time Jesus talks in the New Testament, I have it, uh, like printed out and I have it on a document type thing. And I look at it. And recently I was just going through the, uh, gospel of Mark and reading it and um these here are some of my i have some of my favorite quotes and favorite little things from uh jesus in the gospel of mark and uh i'm gonna share some of them with you so um we're gonna start this one right here and this is at a part where um in the gospel of mark uh, some folks come up to Jesus and say, hey, you know, your mom and your brothers and all them, they're looking for you. And then Jesus says in Mark, and this is in Mark chapter 3, verse 33, who is my mother or my brothers or my brethren? And then in Mark chapter 3, 34 and 35, behold, my mother and my brethren, for who, whosoever shall do the will of God, the same as my brother, and my sister and my mother indeed you know i always think it's interesting because you know recently and i might do a little rant video about this just because i think it's kind of funny somebody uh, I, I was telling them about my little relationship with jesus and uh, they're a christian person and they keep telling me that i need to find me a good church you know and um i i i, I really am not big on going to churches and I'm really much bigger on the idea of everyone who wants to do the will of God, who wants to, you know, serve humanity, who wants to um, benefit other people and, you know, grow in faith and things like that. Those are my real brothers and sisters. Those are my real fellow people in faith. Not me. I mean, I'm not really too concerned what your creed is. Um, but I, I think that this is a very good uh, quote. I, I really like... Jesus, and I, I'm going to say that I noticed a theme as I was going through Mark. And I noticed a theme, obviously there's themes in all of them. It would be silly to say to say that like there's, like, you know, Mark is the only one that has a theme. Nah, man, the other one's no theme, just, you know. You know, I did just kind of there. Oh, hello. Um... The theme in this area is jab, but um, it, it's it's very interesting to me. And there's another one. Uh, this is in Mark uh, chapter seven, verses fourteen through sixteen. I'm gonna bring my notes over a little here. Hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand: there is nothing from without a man that entering. Excuse me. There's nothing. From without a man that entering into him can defile him but the things which come out of him though those are they that defile the man if any man have ears to hear let him hear so this is kind of interesting because if you think about it in like um 
in in the old testament we have a lot of these ideas about like purity of like things you can eat and things you can't eat and activities you can do and stuff like that but what i like uh what jesus is saying here is that that's not what really defiles you what really defiles you what makes you um impure if anything is when uh is like what comes out of your mouth in this case he's saying like you know if you're being like dishonest or if you're like saying hurtful things or, or stuff like that and um you know, we, we frequently find, I didn't write it down, but in the same gospel, there's also uh, the part where some of his followers are hungry on the Sabbath. So they pick a little bit of grain uh, during the Sabbath and the, the Pharisees come up to him and like, yo, dude, control your people, control your people. They're not supposed to be doing that, Jesus. And then Jesus, you know, talks about how, you know, well, when David, uh, King David was in the land and his men were hungry, they, they, uh, took the holy bread that was only meant for the priests and they ate it. So, you know, basically he's telling them to lay off. And I find the idea interesting here because, you know, um, wrong way. Now over here. <laughs> but basically he's talking here about like, there's, Jesus certainly doesn't like defy the law here and he's not trying to like tell you that like the law is unimportant by the law we're talking about like you know the laws of moses and things like that but we're talking about how uh in this case you know like eating and or you know purity laws and things like that but how the thing i find interesting about this is that jesus is telling us that ultimately it's not you know, it's not just like because you ate something that was supposedly impure. It's like the real impurity comes from within, from us um, saying and doing the wrong thing, you know, and not, you know, acting with love and or, and in this case, very specifically, acting with love of God in our heart. And then here, here's uh, where I'm going to talk about this a little bit because I noticed a theme. Um, this is Mark chapter 10, verse 23, and uh, it's going to go through 23 to 27, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break it down with verse 23 first. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how difficult it will be for those who are wealthy and cling, and in the brackets here, it's, and cling to possessions and status and, as security to enter the kingdom of God. And that's, that's, that's from, those words specifically are from the Amplified Bible translation. I put another one here. And Jesus looked around and said unto his disciples, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God, King James. I find this kind of interesting because I, I, I frequently talk to folks about stuff like this. And I, I found that I, I've met a lot of Christians who will really defend the idea of having like a ton of money or, you know, like, you know, like, you know, the followers of Jesus weren't supposed to be poor. But it's like they gave up all their stuff. And Jesus is right here saying that, you know, if you're a rich person, you're not going to get into heaven. However, the verse continues, or the, the chapter continues. The disciples were amazed at his words, but Jesus said again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were even more amazed, and they said to each other, Who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible, but not with God. All things are possible with God. Ultimately, this is really saying that, you know, like, it's kind of interesting because if you consider it in context, like, the people of the time, uh, a lot of them were very much into the idea that, you know, like, especially, like, certain pagan groups were into the idea that if you were rich and wealthy, I mean, it's because the gods blessed you. But here's, and, you know... There were certain Jewish groups as well at the time who had somewhat similar views. And something that's interesting about this is that this is Jesus rebuking that. He's saying that, you know, it, it's not it's not like your wealth that matters. Your wealth doesn't... Oh, there's a lot of clanging up there. It's not the wealth that's important. It's not the wealth that does anything for you. Truly, it's God that does things for you. It's God that um, redeems you and saves you. And that your wealth is actually, if anything, kind of a curse. I mean... I mean, obviously, he doesn't say curse, but you know, it it it, it, it can really hold you back, and it and it and it can um, make it so that you're not acting, you know, righteously and things like that. You know, I haven't put on the mirror right miracles. 
and go down and put on the miracles. This is how Jesus was. He had to get the right load out before he did his miracles. And, and, you know, very specifically, Jesus looked at them and said, with man this is impossible, but not with God. All things are possible with God. And I, I think that's, that's important to remember that ultimately it, it's not... Like, the actions we do, it's not the wealth we have, it's not following the rules. Ultimately, it's always on God. It's it's always our attempt to form a relationship with God. I mean, if you really want, if you want to have all of these different... Um, it's all spells, that's right. Why don't I have more slots? Oh, I don't think I leveled. I didn't level up um, mind as much as I should have. Is that it? No? Or is it intelligence that gives you a... I think it might be intelligence. Either way. But, um... It, it, it's very much more about like you know this this personal relationship of god and i i find this interesting because the more i was reading the gospel of mark i noticed that there was kind of this theme specifically it's it kind of felt like it was um like the idea of like in, in a sense kind of disregarding what like society society had done in a, in a sense that might be a, are, are very much like like you know like not being for like all these ideas like wealth and oh my goodness oh my gosh I may have made a mistake Well, here, let's... Are we still alive? Yeah. Lots that's happened. But yeah, I like how distracted I, I got in the middle of that. But no, like, it, it's very it's very interesting to think about, like, how ultimately that's, that's, that's not the main part. That's not the most important part. And we have this tendency to, you know, kind of... Like, the, the, there's a, a lot of people who get really into the legalism part of Christianity or just religion in general, like, you know, like the Rig Veda. You know, Vedic religion is kind of famous for its, the amount, not only the, um, fact that it has a lot of rules, but kind of like the amount and like the legalism of the Brahmins and things like that. But we also have like the legalism of, um, the Pharisees in, uh, the Bible. And the thing that's interesting about this is like Jesus kind of takes a stand against that. And really, really seems to be implying, like, the relationship aspect of this. And, you know, for someone like me, who's very much into mysticism and stuff, this this really speaks to me. This really speaks to me in, in the ideas of, like, yeah, sure, you can, you can follow the rules if you want to. I mean, if I'm perfectly honest, I'm not super big on a lot of the the rule stuff i think a lot of the rule stuff is just kind of um i don't even necessarily want to say unimportant i just don't think it's like the most important part i i think that it's the rules can be useful but like 
you, you know, here's Jesus telling you that, yeah, there's rules against eating, but it's, it's like the more important thing is like what, what comes out of your mouth? What, what are you saying? How are you interacting with him? You know, I'm kind of expanding on this a little bit, but you know, like, how are you interacting with people? Are you spreading a message of love and hope or are you, you know, engaging in like this legalism? Are you in, are you engaging in these ideas of, um, like, uh, the, 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 like the big, I guess like the big thing here is like the Pharisees, you know, really into legalism. And I think that ultimately Jesus is not really for the legalism. I guess you could maybe make the argument that the Jesus of the Matthew, in the gospel of Matthew is more for legalism. I don't know. I think it's useful in a sense to look at each gospel in their own light and kind of like think about like what the gospel what the person writing that particular gospel was trying to say versus you know just being like um wait i can't i can't electrify this one hmm, that's interesting You, you know, like, I, I think that's a very kind of an interesting thing to notice. And I think it's very important to us on our spiritual journey. Uh, but, uh, like, yeah, we, we should look at each gospel as their, kind of their own thing and look at what each gospel writer is trying to emphasize. For instance, Matthew is very much about, like, Jesus being the Jewish Messiah. And I have one more um, thing from Mark here I have written down. I like how I gave myself all those enhancements, even though I was, there's, like, two dudes left on this floor before I... Uh, actually, I might be able... I, I should have given myself the um, lightning spear. But here, I'm going to just pause halfway up on the ladder and glow here for you because I think this is funny. And this is Mark chapter 10, verses 29 and 31. Verily I say unto you, there is no man that hath left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels. But he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time, houses and brethren and sisters and children and lands. With persecutions and in the world to come eternal life but many that are first shall be last and the last first so yeah i guess the thing i really noticed going through the gospel of mark and like reading kind of the whole thing is that there really does seem like there's this very strong emphasis on like this idea that like you know being being like poor in the sense of like physical things like that isn't very important like the whole legalism the there's the whole idea of like wealth and all these other things are being challenged and jesus is really trying to tell us that you know like these things aren't important like you know it's like giving yourself over to the lord is like forming, forming a relationship with him like forming a relationship with the gospel and trying to work um you know in in the good news and you know this obviously applies to all religious traditions, I think. I think that, um, you know, um, forming a relationship with the divine is a billion, kajillion, kajillion more times important than um, attempting to form a relationship, you, you know, with money and wealth. And, you know, like, the, the things of this world, I think ultimately what we should try to remember is that the things of this world... Oops. The things of this world are always going to fade and are not like the most important things. We tend to get distracted and, you know, this world is very good at, you know, putting arrows and feathers in your head. It's very good at getting you to come to it and, you know, like things like that. And it's interesting because I was talking to this Christian guy and he kept telling me about like spiritual warfare and things like that. And what I thought was interesting was that the things he was talking about just wasn't really jiving with me but one thing i will say is that this this the world itself is very good at trying to get you to come back to it and trying to get you to pay attention to it over anything else and you know 
you know that that is the lord's the lord's maya it's part of um makali you know god's divine play you know like oh hey do you really love me or do you love my toys kind of deal and it's and, it's, and it is kind of silly but you know uh ultimately there's a god is always there for us and b the things of this world are all fading but the thing that's much more important is that we attempt to form this relationship with god and we attempt to find you know understanding and hope and peace and we uh, attempt to give that to other people as well that is ultimate ultimately the much more important thing and not and, and the thing that is important is not like the running around and trying to like impress somebody and you know like when you're when you're really down there and you're really worshiping when you're when you're trying to form that connection with god or even you know when you're just trying to like um an attachment with people you know you should be forming attachments with people and you should be forming attachment with god you know out of love you shouldn't be doing it to get some benefit out of it it shouldn't be for heaven or to avoid hell or anything like that that's that's silly that's nonsense you did that's that's not the main thing you, you you know the main thing the most important thing is forming that relationship of love with god and i can say that the more i form that relationship the more happy I've been, but also the knowing that this world, you know, you don't necessarily have to reject it completely. But you know, a lot of this, all this stuff that you're given, like all this wealth and all this other stuff, that's just not as important. And you know, you should spend it to help other people and you should give up, you know, like you should try to live a moral life and things like that and try to try to really pursue that. And, um, the last little quote here that I'm going to share is one that I, I like. It's um, from Chris Hedges, which is... Chris Hedges is one of my favorite authors, but he's also one of my favorite ministers, and I really enjoy listening to him. But uh, This is from one of his books. I'm not 100% sure which book, but here. Um, there are two sets of principles. There are the principles of power and privilege and the principles of truth and justice. If you pursue truth and justice, it will always mean... A diminution of power and privilege. If you pursue power and privilege, it will always mean the expense of truth and justice. I I think that's a very, very true, and that we shouldn't be out for power and privilege. We shouldn't be out for money. We should be out for truth and justice. We should be out for helping our fellow man. We should be out, you know, man in this case is human, human. But, you know, you, sh you should be out for benefiting and creating a better place with and you know connecting with god and if you don't believe in god you know connecting with the inner essence of humanity and the supreme reality of our meaning and you know place in the universe and even if that that meaning to you is only just like the meaning of friends and family and the meaning of community you know that's that's still wonderful and you know if your meaning is to me the much better meaning i'll be honest but you know believe what you will um, is, you know, connecting with God. I think we connect with God every time we give up something for God, every time we strive for that relationship. And, you know, we should, we should always try to remember that. And, you know, I, I actually quoted, a Rabia Al-Basri in, um, another video that I did recently, but I'll, I'll quote it again, just because I, she has a quote that I really like, or I recently discovered that I really like, and it was, if, and I'm going to butcher it a little bit because I'm not reading it directly, but I'll, I'll share it anyway. But um, if I worship God to avoid hellfire, then burn me in hellfire. If I worship God to gain paradise, then take me out of paradise. But if I worship God for the love of God, then please don't hide your eternal beauty from me. And I think there's a lot of things that are kind of similar here. Obviously not necessarily just in these direct quotes from Mark, but in the gospel of Mark. But, you know, like there, there is that that's the most important thing that we should always come back to God and we should always come back and always try to come back to mercy and always try to come back to being good. That, that's ultimately the way I think is the most important. And I just wanted to share that with you. And I wanted to share these quotes from Mark that I really liked. And But, of course, I am very much against or, well, I'm, I'm very much not in favor of having a lot of material wealth. So, of course... I like these, but, you know, it is what it is. Anyway, 
I hope you're all having a wonderful day, and I hope that you will take some of what I said into your day and try to try to have a great day and try to think about this stuff and try to get close to God or try to create meaning in your life one way or the other. And you know what? God bless and um, big shield bless and um, jab blessing. But uh, yeah, have a great one.